Tuesday the 19th of October is the Feast of St. Paul of the Cross, our patron here in St. Paul's Burtonwood. And so on Tuesday itself, I'll be saying a 12 o'clock Mass for parishioners. And uh, sadly this year, although we'll be beginning our celebrations at the Masses over the weekend, we can't, I'm afraid, have exposition and private prayer as we normally would. Let's hope for next year, shall we? Welcome everyone on this 29th Sunday of Ordinary Time. The theme of the scriptures today is glory and service. Serving others, even to the extent sometimes of our own suffering. Our only hymn on this theme is This is Our God, the Servant King.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you all. And with your spirit. My friends, let's prepare ourselves by calling to mind our sins, and calling to mind God's promise of forgiveness. Kyrie, Kyrie, eleison. Kyrie, Kyrie, eleison. Christe, Christe, eleison. Christe, Christe, eleison. Kyrie, Kyrie, eleison. Kyrie, Kyrie, eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let's celebrate our forgiveness. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. To him be glory forever, to him be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to Christ Jesus. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to Christ Jesus. To him be glory forever, to him be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Spirit. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Spirit. To Him be glory forever, to Him be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, our source of power and inspiration, give us strength and joy in serving you as followers of Christ, he who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from the prophet Isaiah, and it's a very famous reading which is used on Good Friday and Holy Week in which the prophet speaks of a suffering servant who through taking on the faults and sins of others by his sufferings were redeemed. The Lord has been pleased to crush his servant with suffering. If he offers his life in atonement, he shall see his heirs. He shall have a long life, and through him what the Lord wishes will be done. His soul's anguish over, he shall see the light be content. By his sufferings shall my servant justify many, taking their faults on himself. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to each verse of the psalm is, May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. The word of the Lord is faithful, and all his works be justified. The Lord loves justice and right, and fills the earth with his love. May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. The Lord looks on those who revere him, on those who hope in his love, to rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in famine. May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. Our soul is waiting for the Lord. 
the Lord is our help and our shield. May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. The second reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Hebrews. Since in Jesus, the Son of God, we have the Supreme High Priest who has gone through to the highest heaven, we must never let go of the faith that we profess. For it's not as if we had a high priest who is incapable of feeling our weaknesses with us. But we have one who has been tempted in every way that we are, though he is without sin. Let us be confident then in approaching the throne of grace, that we shall have mercy from him and find grace when we are in need of help. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's acclaim the gospel. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Approached Jesus. Master, they said to him, we want you to do us a favour. He said to them, what is it you want me to do for you? They said to him, allow us to sit one at your right hand and the other at your left in your glory. You do not know what you're asking, Jesus said to them. Can you drink the cup that I must drink? Or be baptised with the baptism that I must be baptised? They replied, We can. Jesus said to them, The cup that I must drink, you shall drink. And with the baptism with which I must be baptised, you shall be baptised. But as for seats at my right hand or my left, these are not mine to grant. They belong to those to whom they've been allotted. When the other ten heard this, they began to feel indignant with James and John. So Jesus called them to him, and said to them, You know that among the pagans their so-called rulers lord it over them, and their great men make their authority felt. This is not to happen to you. No. Anyone who wants to become great among you must be your servant, and anyone who wants to be first among you must be slave to all. For the Son of Man himself did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. They are so young. There are hints in the gospels that James and especially John are probably teenagers, 17, 18, 19 years, perhaps 20, that kind of age, young, naive, and a bit stupid. And this question that they ask of John, of our Lord rather, emphasises just how, how thick they are, this early on in their relationship with our Lord. They admire him, they think he's amazing, but it's quite obvious that they're still thinking in the old ways we've been talking about for the last few weeks. They are still thinking of the Saviour of Israel, the Messiah, the Anointed One, the Redeemer, they're still expecting him to be some great kind of political leader, some great kind of general who would unite all the people, conquer the Romans, make Israel top dog among the, the world, the world mind, and then having authority over all the world, they, as his close followers, will also be in for this glory in for this authority, in for this worldly power of the type that our politicians wield. You see, glory, we've said in the past, didn't begin as a, a holy word. Whenever we hear glory, we think of the angels at the nativity, the gloria in mass. But in the original Latin, it's quite a technical word. And a person is glorious 
when they've achieved famous conquests, when they've conquered something and they have great fame throughout the world. It's obvious in the past 2,000 years to us that our Lord's fame has certainly spread throughout the world. It's a different fame from the Romans who used that word originally thought of. They were thinking of great generals and emperors and rulers who were at the top of the heap. Jesus came to totally shift that as he's totally shifted their perspective on so many other things that human beings think of as priorities and important. The whole gospel message is this great inversion. People at the bottom of the heap are at the top of the heap. People at the top of the heap, well, it's not their place and they have to be very careful not to end up at the bottom of the heap in the Christian way of living. But at this stage they're still naive because they think Jesus' glory is going to be that of a great general. They're young kids and they want part of that glory, part of that fame, like politicians. That's why they're saying, looking behind the back, so that other friends, the disciples can't hear. Can we have the special places? Can we sit next to you on either side? So when people are looking at you, Jesus, they'll be looking at us. They're kids and their way of thinking is childish. The gospel message which Jesus is forming this small group with, the penny's not dropped with them yet. That's why he says to them quite seriously, can you drink the cup that I must drink? He's talking about death so that others might live, that you and I might live in future generations. Can you be baptised with the baptism that I must be baptised? He's speaking about his own blood. He's saying to them, if you really want this glory that you don't know the meaning of. You've got to be my, like me, lads. You've got to be prepared to give your life for it. Your actual heart beating life and blood, if need be. And we know most of the apostles did die as the early martyrs. But he's speaking beyond that through the centuries to us as well. Can we be like him in giving up this old way of living life? This old set of priorities, me and my own at the top, and to help with those at the bottom of the heap. Can you follow me in that way? In their wonderful teenage enthusiasm, these two lads say, we can, without knowing what's involved. And our Lord loves them for that youthful enthusiasm and says, okay, you will. You will bear witness as I must you will be, lads, involved in the salvation of the world. Perhaps not on a cross, but in spreading this news, this, this gospel, this inversion, this topsy-turvy turning of everything that the human race has thought important up till now. And he emphasizes it by speaking of the so-called rulers lording it over to them. That's the old way of thinking. So long as I'm okay at the top of the heap, everything's fine. Our Lord's saying, no. If anyone wants to be great among you, they must be the servant. They must be the bottom of the heap. They must not be eager to put themselves first. And again, that message echoes throughout. For I came not to be served like the great Roman emperors, eager to get the position of authority, but to serve. And part of that service is giving life. And beyond saving us from our sin, the living lives that we lead in these bodies are also saved so they can be more full of life. Because what he's saying here is when these inverted values of the gospel infuse our lives, when we're not wasting our lives just trying to scramble to the top of the heap, when we spend our lives trying to care for others as well as ourselves, our lives actually become richer and we enrich the lives of others. By the way we live our lives, 
in generosity, care, compassion, forgiveness. We are actually showing the world there is a richer way of living. That's preaching the gospel. As St. Francis of Assisi said, when you preach the gospel, you don't always have to use words. Let us proclaim our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and, and in, in Jesus, Jesus Christ, his only Son, Son, our Lord, Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered from the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And then he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let's turn to the Father with our needs, the needs of the world, the needs of our communities, and the needs of the Church. Let's pray for people in authority, in the world and in the Church, that they may use their authority generously, not for personal honour, but in service to others and to the world itself. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. hear us. We've spoken often about those at the bottom of the heap. And the fact that it's not often poverty of money that makes a person poor. Let's pray for those at the bottom of the heap at this moment, suffering from or suffering from the threat and possibility of the coronavirus which makes us all equal in our poverty and fragility. That the Lord may support, and if it is will, heal those afflicted with the virus, protect those threatened with it who cannot protect themselves, and especially that those in positions of authority and wealth may dig into their pockets as nations and individuals Help those who are helpless. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. Let's pray again, especially for those at the bottom of the heap, threatened and afflicted by Hurricane Ida and by the continuing volcano in La Palma. Again, that they may be protected. Again, that the Lord may be close to them. Again, that if possible, we may aid them. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. On a joyful note, let's pray for our confirmation youngsters here in Warrington, who were confirmed on two occasions, on Saturday and Sunday last weekend, and this coming week also on Sunday that the confirmation in the Holy Spirit will mark a beginning of new and vigorous life in those youngsters, that like James and John in the Gospel today, they may be full of enthusiasm for following the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let's pray for our dead, especially for our unexpected and untimely dead, either from the coronavirus or from other sudden causes, that their families will be comforted in their grief and heartbreak, and that the Lord will welcome them into his presence. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord gracious, gracious hear us. As we look at the continuing and increasing tensions in the seas around China, let's ask Our Lady, Queen of Peace, to be with us and for us as we pray for peace in men's hearts, which is the only place it can come from. Hail Mary, 
full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. We make these and all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Let's be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my many iniquities. Cleanse me from my sins. Let's pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Lord God, may the gifts we offer bring us your love and forgiveness and give us freedom to serve you with our lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, creator of the world and source of all life. For you never forsake the works of your wisdom, but by your providence, are even now at work in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people Israel through the desert. Now, as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of the Holy Spirit and lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so with all the angels and saints, we too praise you as we acclaim with one voice. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Indeed, you are holy and to be glorified, O God. For you love the human race and always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. And so, most loving and holy Father, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, 
broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more he gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Dying, we give us for our death. Rising, we restore our life. Lord Jesus, come from in glory. And so, most loving and holy Father, as we celebrate this memorial of Christ, your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you've seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favour on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love we may be counted now and unto the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope, Malcolm our Bishop, and all your priestly people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. And also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the Apostles and martyrs, with St. Paul of the Cross, Saint Joseph and all the saints, who shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we have his encouragement to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against, against us, us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day, so that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's give each other a sign of this peace. Lamb of God, you take, take away, away the sins of the world. world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not Lord worthy Jesus. that you should enter under my roof, Lord, but only Son. said a word, and my soul shall be healed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you have already come and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Let us pray. Lord, may this Eucharist help us to remain faithful. May it teach us the way to eternal life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless and protect you now and always. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our celebration is ended. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our final hymn will be Praise the Holiest in the Height. Praise to the Holiest in the Height and Oh, oh, oh.
blessed everyone.